NBC Sports, in association with TVS, present the best in college basketball on the Big Ten Conference Game of the Week. Today, from the Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing, Michigan, it's the Wildcats of Northwestern versus the Michigan State Spartans. Brought to you by Light Beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. By Chevrolet and your Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. By Gillette, makers of Right Guard. Yes, men count on Right Guard because men perspire more. And by Mr. Goodwrench and the General Motor Parts Division. working with me on our first Big Ten regular season telecast of the year and throughout the season, the former Michigan star Steve Grody, you remember him well with the Wolverines. We're going to see some great basketball not only today, but right through to the NCAAs of the Big Ten. Well, I don't think there's any question that from top to bottom, this is the most well-balanced and competitive Big Ten uh, has ever been. Meanwhile, we look at Northwestern and Michigan State. Michigan State, just two seasons removed from a national championship, went off to a tough start, and Judd Heathcote really needs a win today. Well, I think from a morale standpoint, they've got to come up with a win. And not to mention the fact they got to break the ice and get in the W column in the Big Ten race. Northwestern, meanwhile, seems to find that Michigan teams bring out the best in them, and also television. The last time they were on the TVS Big Ten Game of the Week, they beat Michigan in triple overtime. The last time they were here in East Lansing, they beat Michigan State in triple overtime. Well, you know, they beat them both times last year. They beat them when they had their national championship team. They are a thorn in Michigan State side, so we're expecting one great matchup today. Speaking of matchups, Michigan State wants to play matchup zone. Well, they made that defense famous when they had Irvin Johnson. Uh, that's what their, their basic uh, defense is. They'll rely on that, and uh, we can see, we'll look for that all day long. We will look at Jay Vincent as well. Right now, he's the leading scorer in the Big Ten. Well, he's Mr. Do-It-All for Michigan State, rebounding, scoring. And the key to the, the lack of their success is the fact that he hasn't gotten much help. Rod Robertson, meanwhile, has to run the attack for Northwestern. Well, he's a converted uh, guard from forward in high school. He's a four-year player. He gives them that leadership they need out front. Northwestern, as you mentioned, has had excellent success through the years against Michigan State. Rich Falk is 3-1 and one against Michigan State. Judd Heathcote is 3-5 and five in his Michigan State career against Northwestern. And as a matter of fact, Northwestern holds an advantage over only one other Big Ten club head-to-head -head in all-time series, and that is Michigan State. They lead the Spartans 31-29 in the overall series. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off in just a minute. I'll tell you, I was a born soccer player. Did everything with my feet. Took out the rubbish with my feet, made the bed with my feet, drove my mum crazy. But I finally found something I enjoy doing with my hands, drinking light beer from Miller. Light has a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling, but what really makes me happy is the taste. It's terrific. Now, my mum should be happy too. Look, mum, no feet. <laughs> light like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. On Saturday afternoons for over 40 years, millions of Americans have enjoyed something very special. The Metropolitan Opera, broadcast live on radio. Texaco's been proud to bring you these broadcasts, helping make the Metropolitan America's only national opera company. Texaco, your ticket to the opera for over 40 years. Out here, temperatures can plummet below zero and snow can be waist deep. Out here and everywhere, you'll find Chevy Citation, America's best-selling front-wheel drive. Citation's traction works hard to pull you through weather hardly fit for man or beast. With that kind of traction and this kind of room, Citation can help pull you and your load of huskies through the winter. Chevy Citation, one of man's best friends. Chevy Citation. It works. 
Have you ever flown a plane? Cowboy. You've been in an airport. You know, airports got something so you can talk to people who aren't even there. The public phone. You can make business calls or important calls. Calling from the airport is so convenient. Gives you something to do when there's nothing to do. All you people in motion, here's a good notion. All over the land, call soon as you can. I could have done that. And now we'll have the starting lineups for Michigan State and for Northwestern. And here is Eric for Seth, the house announcer here at Ladies Jensen Fieldhouse. Ladies and Fieldhouse. gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Jensen Fieldhouse, home of Michigan State basketball. The Spartans are pleased to welcome today the Wildcats of Northwestern University. Starting at forward, 6'8", junior from Oak Forest, Illinois, 25, Jim Stack. For Michigan State, 6'8", freshman from Saranac, number 20, Ben Tower. At the other forward for Northwestern, 6'5", sophomore from Chicago, 33, Gannis Rathel. For Michigan State, 6'8", senior from Lansing Eastern, 31, co-captain Jay Vincent. At center for the Wildcats, 6'9", junior from Beloit, Wisconsin, 32, Bob Grady. For Michigan State, at center, 6'6", six, six, sophomore from River Rouge, 41, Derek Perry. At the guard, Northwestern, 6'2", sophomore from Chicago, 31, Michael Jenkins. For Michigan State, 6'5", senior from Windsor, Ontario, co-captain number 12, Mike Berkovich. At the other guard, 6'3", senior from Elkhart, Indiana, 21, Rob Roberson. And for Michigan State, junior, 6'2", from Birmingham, number five, Kevin Smith. Wildcats, coached by Rich Falk in his third year, Michigan State. Johnny we'll be Cole back with the opening tip-off right after this. Oh, Mr. Goodwrench, can I get a tune-up? Sure can. What's that? Your written estimate. Mr. Goodwrench wants you to know in advance just about how much the job will cost. He has the GM training and tools available to do the job right. Gee, that's reasonable. Mr. Goodwrench knows our customers don't like surprises. Keep that great GM feeling. Where Mr. Goodwrench works. With genuine GM parts. Right guard knows a man sweats more than a woman. Why a man needs Right Guard. Right Guard has a male effectiveness formula. A formula so strong, more men count on it to help stop perspiration odor every day. Right Guard knows there's a difference between you. Men perspire more. And that's what Right Guard's for. Ed Marisich is the referee today, flanked by Mike Stockner and Rollo Vallum, who will work with them. Bob Costas and Steve Grody, Jettison Fieldhouse, East Lansing, Michigan. The Spartans of Michigan State, 6-6 six and six overall, 0-3 oh in the conference. They have lost to Indiana, Iowa, and Minnesota. Northwestern, on the other hand, 7-5 and five overall, 1-2 and two in the conference. They beat Wisconsin by a bucket. They lost to Illinois and Ohio State as Clark Kellogg burned them. The Buckeye Stars scored 42 in that victory. Off the tip, Robertson driving and missing for Northwestern. The rebound to Grady. Grady along the baseline brings it back outside to Michael Jenkins. And Bob, both teams are very patient. We look for a low-scoring ball game. Northwestern, not a very good shooting team. They may try to get it out and open up the, uh, the defense to get an easier shot at the hoop. Stack takes it into the middle, make it Jenkins, and draws a foul. Jenkins is just a sophomore. He played a little bit last season. He's a young, young player. The way to beat a zone is always to penetrate and dish off of the jump shot. Here you see he goes in the air, hit on the head. I'm surprised. If he would have went up with the shot, they would have given him two chances at the free throw line. Berkovich picks up the foul, his first, team's first. Grady along the baseline, double team, brings it out to Robertson. Robertson to Jenkins against the Michigan State zone. 
of the season, Northwestern has shot only 43%. Rafael up with the jumper, they call him for traveling, and on the turnover, Michigan State will have their first possession. There's been a dramatic change in the Northwestern concept of basketball. They used to be the big, slow teams. They've got tremendous athletes on their ball club now, and the future is, is real, uh, real bright with the Northwestern Wildcats. Northwestern opens playing man-to-man. -man. Michigan State obviously opened in their zone. Jay Vincent launches one and misses, and the rebound bounces out to Robertson. Still scoreless, we have played a minute. Robertson, off to Rafael. Gattis Rafael playing with a sprained ankle which kept him out of the Wisconsin game and kept him from starting the Ohio State contest. Jim Stack penetrates and pops. Still scoreless, the rebound to Perry. Kevin Smith will bring it across for Michigan State. Berkovich from 20, in and out. The rebound off the hands of Brady. Vincent battling along with Robertson, and there'll be a jump ball. On the Michigan State side, Jay Vincent is taking a total of 33% of all the shots at the Spartans attempt. Obviously, someone has to pick that up. Berkovich in particular. Not only does he have to make some shots to the outside, but he has to be a threat. They have to believe he is going to take the shot so they can open it up inside for Vincent. Vincent tips the ball, but it comes right to Rafael, who drives and is hammered on the play by Smith. And the foul is on Smith of Michigan State, his first and team foul number two. And Gattis Rafael will be coming to the free throw line. And I think it's a pretty obvious mistake to win a tip but have the other team get the, get the tip and, and go to the other end for an uh, uncontested layup. Rafael had a 30-point game earlier this season against Princeton. And the ice is finally broken after nearly a minute and a half with Northwestern leading it one to nothing. On the season from the line, Rafael is 81%. Northwestern must shoot well in order to win this game. They have to shoot well from the field. They've been over 50% only twice this season, under 40, four different times, 43% overall. Michigan State, on the other hand, has hit 51% of their shots for the season. Northwestern shoots pretty well from the free throw line. If you shoot well from the line and not from the field, it generally means your shot selection is pretty poor. Vincent misses, Perry rebounds, and ties the game. This is some of the help I'm talking about that Jay Vincent needs. Derek Perry in the last three ball games, a total of five rebounds. Vincent, of course, leads them in that category, averaging eight carrots a game. Perry, who is averaging 11 points scored per contest, gets the first bucket for Michigan State. Jenkins bounces out to Rathel against that very difficult to solve Spartan zone. Tower comes over and blocks the Grady attempt. The outlet to Berkovich. Berkovich is one on three and then throws it away as Tower came in on the wing. And on the Spartan turnover, the Wildcats have it. Okay, here we go. If there's one place Grady can operate, it's this little turnaround jumper that he shoots pretty well. Here you see the weak side help, the block. We did not see the fast break. Robertson, the southpaw, misses it, and the rebound belongs to Michigan State. Northwestern still without a field goal. Kevin Smith on the stutter step. Berkovich, plenty of room, and the bucket. Berkovich has played some forward this year. They move him to the backcourt for this game. He's an excellent leaper. You just saw how well he can shoot the jump shot. Of course, the deer that had the national championship ball club, that's when he named, made a name for himself. As their zone breaker. Michigan State leading at 4-2. I think we've already got an indication of the problems Northwestern has in their shooting. They've had decent 12-foot jump shots. They still have not had one fall. Robertson out to Jenkins. Jenkins from 20. Ties the game at four. Basket by 31. If you are a Michigan Jenkins. State Spartan, this is the kid you'd like to see take that outside shot. Of all the starters, he's the worst shooter, shooting just approximately 42% from the field. Jay Vincent at the foul line. Tries to dump one back door to Tower, and they throw it away once more. So Northwestern has the basketball. Vincent is the leading scorer in the Big Ten, averaging 24.3 in three conference games and 21 points a game overall for the season in 12 contests. Offensive foul will be called on Robertson of Northwestern, who looks at the official and says, who, me? Well, I think any time you get a foul call on you, you have to contest it a little bit. Once again, this is always the toughest call in basketball. Is it a charge or, or is it a block? At Michigan State, you're going to get the close ones. That was a charge. Robertson picking up his first personal. Tied at 4, 16-30 to play in the first half. Smith on the dribble. 
finding Vincent. Jay spinning and missing. He's off for three, but Perry tipped it in, and Michigan State has a 6-4 lead. Perry has four of their six points. Berkovich the other two. If there would be two key players for Michigan State, it would be Perry, like I said, picking up and helping out on the boards, and I think it would also be Kevin Smith, taking control of this team and starting to really be its leader. Robertson to Grady on the baseline, collision with Tower, offensive foul on Grady. Well, I, I think we're possibly seeing the frustration of the Northwestern ball club. They can't get that outside shot to fall, so they, they try to take it into the basket. They've committed two charges now. An official's timeout is called 15 57 to play in the half, 6 4 MSU. the taste of Sheraton's. You're gonna love every inch of the place. We've got taste. Sheraton, you've got taste. We've got style. We've got style. For a great hotel in the center of things, call 800-325-3535. We've got taste! It's your skin, baby, and I like it very, very smooth. That means a super close shave. So trust Noxzema, because you'll need all the soothing comfort you can get. Like I said, it's your skin, baby. And I like it very, very, very smooth. That feel good? For well, shaves this close, trust Noxzema. It's your skin, baby. When you reach age 55, you're wanted by Kemper. Because drivers your age or older are among the safest on the road. So the cavalry wants you. Kemper offers drivers 55 and over up to a 10% discount now. And guaranteed renewal at age 60 and beyond. If you've been with us for the five previous years. For auto discounts and guaranteed renewal, call out the cavalry. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. Tomorrow, college basketball's best battle it out in exciting action featuring Louisville versus Missouri or Indiana against Ohio State. Check local listings for the game in your area. Bob Costas and Steve Grody at Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing, Michigan. The Spartans of Michigan State have the ball following a timeout. They also have a two-point lead at 6-4. Steve, we might as well mention now that toward the end of the game, we'll pick a player of the game and he'll receive the Chevrolet MVP award. And begin thinking about your candidates as this one unfolds as it will be your vote and mine who will determine who gets the MVP award. That might get us in trouble throughout the season. Vincent is clobbered before he gets the shot away. Basket does not count. It'll be Michigan State ball out of bounds. No basket. Northwestern foul. 32. Bob, Bob Brady, Brady picks up the personal. His second, team third. His second and the team's third. And now Grady Number will go out, and Colin Murray, Colin Murray comes in to replace him. And this would be the one area where Northwestern can't get in foul trouble. Grady's at 610, he's a leaper. Let's take, let you have the action. Jenkins has the steal and the tying bucket. Jenkins took it the length of the floor after the steal. We are tied at six. Colin Murray, who just checked in for Northwestern, is a freshman, 6'11 and 215, from Taft High School in Chicago. Tower bobbles, Smith recovers, baseline, flings it outside to Berkovich. Berkovich picked up by Robertson. And Smith with Jenkins on him. And as you can see, when Michigan State doesn't have that quick break, they're going to slow it down, look inside for, for Jay Vincent. Smith yo-yos one up and in, and he got the roll. Now, in terms of transfer to the University of Detroit, He's the, you know, every program has a player that just never seems to develop and, and play consistently. He, this has been his case here at Michigan State. Rafael, baseline to Murray, slides inside, can't hit the reverse, but he was fouled. Murray now will go to the free throw line. We're on the season, he's had only four opportunities and he's made but one for 25%. For people who watch a lot of Big Ten basketball, the Northwestern people would compare Murray to the young center Randy Brewer at Minnesota. They feel like perhaps he's a little more advanced than Brewer was as a freshman, and they look for big things from him in the future. And you can see right there, he, for a tall man, he possesses a pretty decent shooting touch. He can tie the game if he hits this one. The foul a moment ago on Perry was his first, and both teams have three team fouls. 14.55 to play in the half, tied at eight. Berkovich inbounding against pressure. Smith comes across. 
Kevin Smith against Rod Robertson. Vincent setting a screen for Smith. He spins off and he fires and he misses. Vincent rolls inside for the rebound and misses the follow. Tip won't fall by Perry. Murray gets a hand on it, out of bounds, and it belongs to Michigan State. And I'll tell you what, I don't see Judd Heathcote from Michigan State smile very often, but the more Derek Perry keeps getting rebounds, the bigger the smile's gonna get. The inbound to Tower. Tower finding Berkovich. Jay Vincent is now 0 of 4 from the field for Michigan State. Don't bet that that will continue. And so Vincent with the ball. And don't bet that he'll stop shooting either. Perry fires an air ball. Comes out the tower. Tower's turnaround won't drop. Perry again. Misses again. They got six cracks at the bucket. This trip down the floor. Tower can't hit. And Vincent may have fouled over the back, and he did. I counted seven shots. Counting the sequence before the out of bounds play. Seven shots. And they come up empty. Yeah, yeah, Certainly they didn't get a point, but once again, you don't have to shoot a very good percentage if you're going to get that many cracks at the basket. And in general, this is what will beat you. Second chance baskets. 38-year-old Rich Falk, you got to look at him. He really, truly is one of the fine young coaches in the country. In his third season at Northwestern, he was an assistant at Northwestern for many years before getting the top job. Off the Wildcat miss, Michigan State comes back. Vincent foul on the play as he was surrounded by three foul. Northwestern defenders and Jenkins 31. picks up the personal, his Michael first, Jenkins. and it's team foul his number four. All right, once again, here you'll see the fast break. One mistake Kevin Smith does seem to make is he'll leave his feet before he, before he passes the ball off. Anytime Jay Vincent gets it, you know he's going to go inside and you see the, uh, see the foul situation. Some shock troops coming in now for Michigan State as Judd Heathcote empties the bench. Herb Bostick is in the game. Rick Kay is in the game. Bill Kaywood has checked in. Randy Morrison is also in. And it looks like Tim Gore, number 10, is the fifth player. So all five starters are out and five substitutes come in all together. Bostick set to play it in. Bostick out to Randy Morrison. Morrison guarded by Robertson in the Northwestern man-to-man. -man. Tim Gore with it. Now Morrison floats through, finds Bostick for the pop, and Bostick gets the roll. Bostick. Bostick. Morrison who made the pass right there is a Class D player. You can't make a, I'm sorry, a Class C player from the state of Michigan. You can't make much of a bigger jump from Class C to, a, to a, we've seen a lot of action in the Big Ten. Jenkins with it at the head of the key. Guarded by Robertson. Has this defense changed any with the new players? I don't think so, as you can see. As a matter of fact, the defense looks to be a little more aggressive. When kids get in who haven't had a chance to play, you're generally gonna see them play a little bit harder than the regulars. We got a foul away from the ball, and it will go against Rick Kay. Kay picks up the foul. There he is, number 42. And Bob, I must admit, I, I'm a little surprised. Michigan State doesn't have a, a troop, say, like the North Carolina team does, where they bring a, a fresh new troop of people in for certain situations. This is something new. I've never seen Judd Heathcote use it. Let's see how long Northwestern keeps their patience before taking a bad percentage shot. They almost lost the ball, as Morrison had a hand on it, but Northwestern keeps it. Jenkins says, let's run play number four. Let's see what develops. Bounces it inside for the jumper by Stack, which ties the game. Basket by 25, Jim Stack. Tied at 10, and neither team has had more than a two-point lead at any time. Rick Kay to Herb Bostick, who'll drive the baseline. Double pumps it outside to Morrison, 18-footer, off the glass and nowhere near. Loose ball to Robertson. Robertson comes racing back. That collision, no foul call. Robertson gets away a weak jumper, which is an air ball, and is taken by Kaywood underneath. Weird sequence there. Morrison in all kinds of traffic, out to Kay. Northwestern's best chance, considering the tough defense Michigan State is playing, might come on transition. Robertson tried to push the ball up the floor quickly last time. It didn't work out, but that might be their best strategy. I don't think there's any question about it. When you don't shoot well, you have to do anything you can to get an easier chance at the basket. Running the fast break is the way to do it. 11.45 to play as Bostic penetrates and misses. The rebound to Stack. Stack out to Robertson with the outlet. 
Rob, we may have lacked points in this ball game, but we certainly have lacked action and excitement. Gattis Rathel swishes a 15-footer. And now the Wildcats have their turn to lead at 12-10, and Rathel has scored four points. Morrison has it poked away and stolen by Jacobs. Jacobs now in a one-on-three situation, slows up, waits for his teammates. Stack gets up in the air, had nowhere to go, and the interception is made by Gore. Bostic now to Kaywood. Little Kaywood in the front court, gives it to Randy Morrison. Gore with a head fake. Shut off defensively by Robertson, but there to swish it is Rick Kay. Well, we've got a lot of players in there who haven't played much. I think it's shown a little bit in the Spartans, uh, uh, the wild, crazy play. They haven't really set up the offense like they would normally with their starters in there, but they certainly haven't lost anything with these people in the lineup. Holland Murray, high post, loses it to Gore of Michigan State. We're tied at a dozen as Gore brings it down. Rick Kay with it. And now Herb Bostick. Tim Gore, 19-year-old freshman from Erie, Pennsylvania, goes up in the air and is fouled by Michael Jenkins of Northwestern. Northwestern foul, 31, Michael Jenkins, his second, 15 foul. Jenkins now picking up his second foul, and the 15th foul, foul on State. Northwestern. Gore pays a visit to the free throw line. He's 7 of 14 there so far this year for 50%. The line for and now Judd Heathcote, 10, having rested his starters, will bring four of them back in in just a moment. And for Michigan Everybody State, comes out except for Gore, who's at the free throw line. And I think quite surprisingly, we haven't had a, a lot of fouls for such a ragged game that we've seen uh, this far in the first 10 minutes of the ball game. Berkovich is back in with Perry, Tower, and Vincent. Gore at the line. Gets the roll. In for Northwestern, number 12, John Egan. And now Northwestern to their bench. John Egan, a senior from Peoria, Illinois, checks in. Jenkins, who committed the last foul, goes out. Gore hits them both, and now Gore will depart. Kevin Smith will replace him, but before that can happen, a timeout is called. 10 minutes and 25 seconds to play first half, and Michigan State leads by two. Flight operations, Hawaiian Islands. 155 is a go bird. And the green stripe runner. Bring up 155 on number two elevator. Cloud top to 28,000 feet. Alpha Hotel, your wind is down the deck at 28,000. The Navy. Over 75% of our jobs give you technical training. Get one. Launch aircraft. And two. And three. Speak to your local recruiter or call this toll-free number. Navy. It's not just a job. It's an adventure. 22. Foul! Oh, what a call! What a heartburn. How do you spell relief? Check the board, coach. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaid spells relief. Unbeatable relief. Relief Tums can't beat. Relief no other leading antacid can beat. For comic relief, I put on a frown. But for acid indigestion, I spell relief. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Unbeatable. Rolaid spells relief. Unbeatable relief. On NBC Sports World, see the greatest lineup of figure skaters ever assembled in one competition. Plus basketball's Meadowlark Lemon and sports journal looks at athletes' wives tomorrow. College basketball tomorrow on NBC, 1 o'clock Eastern Time. You'll see either Indiana versus Ohio State. Clark Kellogg coming off a 42-point game a couple of nights ago. Bobby Knight's Hoosiers always tough. Kitchell had that 40-point performance against Illinois earlier. Or some portions of the country will see Missouri with the seven-footer Steve Stepanovich going up against last year's NCAA champions, the Louisville Cardinals at Freedom Hall in Louisville. As we come back to action, Northwestern with the basketball. They trail by two at 14-12. Here's Colin Murray. Murray to Jim Stack for the turnaround, and Stack banks it off the board and hits it. He has a very unusual release. It's a two-hander up over the head. Normally, when a player has such a funny-looking shot, he's usually perfected it and is a pretty decent shooter. This is the case with Jim Stack. He scored four points, and the game is tied again at 14. Ah! Vincent with the line and the slam by Tower. What a play. Well, this is reminiscent of the NCAA championship. This is the one Magic Johnson and Greg Kelso used to run so often. Ben Tower. Let's talk about a little bit bigger of a jump. He's the fellow that played Class D basketball in the state of Michigan last year. He, too, now has become a starter in Big Ten play. Egan with it outside. Brings it to Rathel and back to John Egan. 
famous namesake who starred for Providence and in the NBA some years ago. Rathel drills it. And again, Michigan State has their lead erased and the game is tied at 16. Neither team is led by more than two at any time. Rathel has scored a half dozen. Vincent with his best field goal. It had to happen eventually. Well, there's Jay Vincent at his best. You know, what you'd like to do with Vincent is front him so that he can't get the ball inside. Front him from the baseline. When he gets it, make him turn inside where the defensive help is. Northwestern just didn't defend it very well. Robertson misses. Rebound out of bounds. Touch last by Northwestern. It belongs to Michigan State. The basket a moment ago by Vincent is first of the game. He's normally a 50% field goal shooter. He had missed his first five tries. Smith penetrates. Dishes to Tower who traveled, and the ball comes back to the Wildcats. You know, as good as Jay Vincent is, I don't think we've seen him yet perform in, in, his, in the area where he's improved the most. He is really capable now of shooting that 15 and 18 foot jump shot. And I'm sure we'll see that if, 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 they, if they need it, he'll come outside and do it for them. Egan to Rafael. Rafael up in the air, dumps it inside the middle. That's Power's second block shot of the afternoon. Smith, Vincent, the pop, bang. There it is. That has really been over the last two years where he's really improved his game. Previous to that, when they had Kelso, Magic Johnson, Berkovich, he did not have to perform that duty. Once again, here you see the fast break. He wants the ball right now. That's what you love to see as a coach. You want that player he, who wants the ball. He's got the confidence that he can put it in. Egan from 22 hits it. And Northwestern is back to within a field goal at 20 to 18. over the timeline, stutter steps and fires and connects from the head of the key, the basket counts and there's a foul on the play. So Michigan State rebuilds the lead to four. Neither team is led by more than that. And we talked at the beginning of the show at how well balanced the Big Ten was. We're watching the Michigan State Spartan squad right now that I would never guess is, hasn't had a victory yet in Big Ten play. Smith, a 75% free throw shooter, completes the three-point play. We have 7.47 to play until halftime. Michigan State with the game's biggest lead so far, 23-18. We'll be right back. Later today, see exciting fourth round coverage as top celebrities and golf's top pros try to take home the title of the prestigious Bob Hope Desert Classic. Later today on NBC. Time during the season, we'll be giving you reports on some of the other winter sports in the Big Ten and swimming. Indiana has been the perennial power in the conference, winning 20 straight league championships. Last night, the Hoosiers turned back a strong Iowa team by a 67-46 score. The Hoosiers could be headed for 21 in a row in swimming in the Big Ten. The preceding announcement was furnished by the Big Ten Athletic Conference. <laughs> Northwestern with the ball and Rafael fires to the baseline and misses. The rebound bounces to Berkovich. Michigan State leads by five. A chance to build at the seven. 7.25 on the clock. Berkovich dishes to Vincent. Now Vincent has hit three shots in a row. Hey, Michigan State falling back into that zone. Stacked faking, may have traveled, he did. 
Jim Stack walks with the ball, and now the tide turning toward Michigan State. They're up by seven, and following a turnover, they'll have the ball. And Rich Schlaff, the Northwestern Western. coach, doesn't timeout. want this to go any Wild further. Game. He timeout. asks for a timeout. And I think if you're Northwestern, you have to you have to make sure that you remain close in the early parts of the ball game. We'll be back right after this. Head and Shoulders doesn't have it. Selsen Blue doesn't have it. Only Denerex has it. An extra relief medicine to stop dandruff itch. You can feel it tingle. All three have one medicine for dandruff itch. But only Denerex adds a second medicine. An exclusive anti-itch medicine many dermatologists recommend. You can feel it tingle. That's extra relief medicine. And only Denerex has it. In regular or new mountain fresh herbal, Denerex stops dandruff itch with an extra relief medicine. They wanted you to build bridges over rivers, but you had other plans. And Monte Carlo. Your car is the strikingly new 1981 Monte Carlo, with the economy of a responsive V6 and fresh, clean, sharply sculpted lines. And you'll choose it because you're proud of who you are. And you. And Monte Carlo. 1981 Monte Carlo. A matter of personal pride from Chevrolet. Saturday, it's the series premiere of Walking Tall. Poe Svensson stars as Buford Pusser, the crusading sheriff who inspired three movies. The legend lives on. Walking Tall. And don't forget, following today's game, the Bob Hope Desert Classic. The top names, Trevino, Nicholas, last year's winner, Craig Stadler. Jerry Pate has been playing extremely well, so has Bruce Litsky in that tournament. And we'll have it for you following today's game on NBC. Berkovich from Michigan State penetrates and can't hit the scoop shot. Vincent follows, and that won't fall. Perry will try, and he will miss. Out of bounds to Northwestern. Well, what can you say if you're a Michigan State coach? You probably haven't had a rebounding performance like this yet. And you, here you'll see. Now, he just lost control of this ball. Look at the strength of Jay Vincent. He goes up. I, you know, I can't believe he'll continue to miss those. Once again, that ball was on the rim, and the Northwestern player hit the net. It probably never makes a difference, but it technically is a goaltending call. Stack from the side of the key is short. Berkovich got a man wide open. Smith racing down. Double pump to avoid the foul. Hit the shot and got the foul. What a move by Smith. Uh, I'm hope, I was hoping we get a chance to see it. There we see a one pass fast break. Cherry picking a little bit. And here you see the double pump. That tells me that Smith's got good leg strength on the jump. He's got a good hang time. And he's strong enough to pump, hit foul, and put it back up. He actually hit the shot while he was on his way down. The second three point play of the first half for Smith. He has a total of eight points. The foul was on Egan. And now Michigan State suddenly has a 10-point lead at 28 to 18. The foul on Egan was his second and the seventh on Northwestern, so they are now over the limit. More problems for the Wildcats. And this ball game was tied 16 apiece. Since then, Michigan State has outscored the Wildcats 12-2. And here's Smith reaching in, knocking it away, and then there's a foul on the play against Egan as Smith headed the other way. Egan picking up his third. And with Northwestern over the limit, Smith will come to the line and shoot a one and one. Judd Heathcote likes what he sees. Smith is a 75% free throw shooter. One shot, bonus for long. Gets the bonus. We, we might mention at this point that there has been a rule change in the NCAA. Probably because the rule never gets interpreted correctly. From now on, when the foul shooter releases the ball, everyone can go into the lane. They no longer have to wait till the ball hits the rim. With 5.52 on the clock, Michigan State is up by a dozen at 30 to 18. Michael Jacobs. Rod Robertson. Robertson averaging just shy of 15 points a game. He is their top scorer. Rafael up with a jumper that won't fall. The rebound to Jay Vincent. Vincent firing to a wide open Berkovich. And Michigan State continues that run. They're up 32-18, and they have outscored Northwestern 16-2 since the game was tied at 16. And it's been a team effort on Michigan State. We mentioned the fact that Jay Vincent, up to this point of season, has been doing it all. He's getting a lot of help today. Last time these two teams 
Let's play it here. Northwestern won in triple overtime. Northwestern has beaten Michigan State three of the last four times they met, including an 18-point verdict in the Spartans' championship season two years ago. And so far today, it's been all Michigan State. Grady, Bob Grady takes it baseline, loses control, chases it to the corner. Perry moves in for the deflection and the steal, but a whistle for a foul. Well, I'll tell you, this is a very spirited Michigan State Spartan club right now. They're, they're basically just haven't made a mistake. They're rebounding. They're getting every missed shot. They, they got quick hands on defense. They're making the right pass. They're running. They're filling the lanes. Uh, obviously responsible for the 32-18 lead they got right now. Perry picking up his second foul, and it's team foul number six, so one more in Michigan State will be over the line. State has been in the zone all the way. They throw it away. Grady unable to handle the pass. Another Northwestern turnover. Spartan ball. Berkovich had a bit of trouble getting it in. Smith came back to him to take the pass. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Rathel with the steal. He's got Jenkins on his left, gets it to him, and Jenkins then cut off by Tower, who fouls him. We talked about the, the transformation in the Michigan State basketball team physically from a tall, slow ball club to going with the quicker, faster people. I think mentally now, Northwestern's a team that believes it can win, that is so important. Generally in a game like this in the past, Northwestern was a type of ball club that would fold up. Rich Falk tells me that they've got a group of winners now. They've got good kids. They've got kids that are going to hustle and play the entire game. This is going to be the telling point of this ball game. Will they hang in there, and will they be able to come back? Jenkins misses badly on the free throw. He has one more coming. A long, dry spell for Northwestern since the game was tied at 16. They've been outscored 16-2. Jenkins gets the bounce and one point out of it. 32 to 19. Five points for Jenkins in the first half. Smith comes racing back to Jay Vincent. Looked like he walked no call. Vincent gets the shot away and two more for him. Is that a power forward in the NBA or, or is he? He can go inside. He can do it outside. He's having an All-American year. And power forward, of course, is his natural position. Last year he played center. This year they moved Perry into the pivot. Last year as well, Vincent was hampered by a foot injury. Nonetheless, he was Michigan State's MVP. This year he's back 100% and playing like it, leading the club in scoring and in rebounding, leading the whole conference in scoring for that matter. Berkovich with a steal as things continue to go sour for Northwestern. 34-19, Michigan State by 15 points. Perry posts up for the hook. They lead by 17. You almost have to feel sorry for Northwestern. They've had their two best ball clubs the last two years. The Big Ten has gotten better. They're playing well again this year, and they have to run into a red-hot Michigan State team that's been down. It looks like Perry has taken up the mantle of Magic Johnson. He is the most exuberant player on this Michigan State club. He smiles when things go right. He jumps up and down. He claps his hands. Well, I think you said it exactly right. He's the player that really is, has to make room for Jay Vincent to, to, to perform inside. You know, all you have to say to Derek is, please, please get some rebounds, Derek. And, and you look at the stats, and he gets less than five rebounds per game. You know, he did get hot one point during the season. He had games at Utah State, Providence, and St. Joseph. He goes 13, 18, and 16 points, seven rebounds, 11 rebounds, 10 rebounds. It looks like he's finally come to play. Then he gets three games in a row, and he gets a total of five rebounds. So a consistency from him is going to be very important for Michigan State throughout the season. Tomorrow, an action-packed afternoon on NBC Sports at 1 p.m. Eastern and 12 Central College Basketball featuring Indiana and Ohio State and also Missouri and Louisville. Then the season premiere of NBC Sports World with the World Professional Figure Skating Championships. And then at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, it's final round coverage of the Bob Hope Desert Golf Classic. All here tomorrow on NBC, the leader in innovative sports coverage and your network this year for the Super Bowl. That Indiana-Ohio State, a very interesting matchup. Early in the year, the, the people had a look at that drooling, said here we've got two teams that will probably be ranked in the top five, ten of the country. Both teams got off to a slow start. I think they've both proven that they're going to have to be dealt with and that they're going to be contenders in the Big Ten championship. Tower has gone out, and Rick K, number 42, is back in for Michigan State. For Northwestern, it's Robertson, Jenkins, Rathel. Paul Schultz making his first appearance, wearing number 23, and Bob Grady, number 32, is the pivot man. This is Grady with the ball out of the high post. Robertson to Schultz. 
Berkovich, Kay, Smith, Vincent, and Perry for Judd Hiko. And another steal. Berkovich taking it away once more. Berkovich, head of the key, thinks about it, decides yes, but the shot won't fall. Perry rebounds and misses. Vincent will try. He will hit it, plus a foul. Will the tide stop? It just keeps rolling and rolling and getting bigger and bigger. They've doubled the score now. All right, once again, as you said, he, usually when you hesitate, you're not going to make it if you shoot it. A little bit hard off the back of the rim. Jay Vincent does what he does so well. Gets fouled, puts it up. We've, we've, they've doubled the score now. Vincent now in double figures with 10. He's only a 65% free throw shooter, but he cans that, completing a three-point play. Since we were tied at 16, Michigan State has outscored Northwestern 23 to three. They lead by 20 at 39 to 19, with 2.50 on the clock. And Northwestern now really showing the signs of not having an outside shooter. They forced it inside and, and have thrown it away. That time they get the basket. Stack following the missed shot by Robertson. Stack has come right back in after being relieved briefly by Schultz. Jenkins has a steal. He's got Robertson on his right. He gets it to him, pull up, jump, off the glass and good. Two straight hoops for Northwestern. In the last 20 seconds, they scored more points than they had scored in the previous seven minutes. Well, you, you saw what I talked about, Kevin Smith. He'll come down. He'll just juke it a little too much when it's unnecessary. And he just lost the ball with absolutely no pressure. Robertson, who is averaging 14.8, just got his first basket of the day for Northwestern. 39-23 and a whistle for a foul on Robertson. Northwestern foul on 21. Rob Robertson is second. Ask, Rich Falk is asking, going to have to ask a lot of his ball club now. Rick Kane. You get back in a game like this line. by by not losing your poise, which is tough for a young, a young ball club. But usually you get back in a game like this by playing real strong, Rick tough Kane. defense. It's real hard to press a team on their own floor and, and make up a 16-point lead on the road in the Big Ten. Rick Kay, a senior from the Detroit area, cans the first free throw, has the bonus coming. He is a 67% free throw shooter. Tower is waiting to come back in. You saw him at the scorer's table. Kay comes up empty on the second try, 40 to 23, 205 to play until halftime. Michigan State up by 17. And this zone defense has completely perplexed Northwestern. They haven't been able to get inside for decent shots. Rathel misses, but he was fouled by Perry. Not only have they not been able to get the shots they would hope for, but Michigan State has hounded them into countless turnovers. Well, like I, I mentioned before, and here you see, once again, now they finally, when they do get a shot, look, the, the, the Michigan State defense is just tremendous. They very seldom get an uncontested, uncontested shot. And once again, Michigan State normally there to pick off the miss. The fellas scored a half dozen. And brings his total to seven with 156 left. I don't think I've ever seen the Michigan State rims be so nice to, to a ball club or, or, or in a ball game. We've seen a lot of them hit the rim, roll around, and fall in. 40 to 25, Michigan State's lead is down to 15. Unofficially, Northwestern has committed nine turnovers in the first half. Michigan State has been guilty of seven. Vincent whirling, Vincent shooting through the lane and heading it. He took it inside like a guard and then uses the strength of the power forward to muscle people inside. Well, you don't have to describe it. He, he said it all about his complete ability to play the game. Watch his Take a look. Work. They run the four corner and they let their center come out and go one on one. You know, interestingly enough, he shoots so well for not following through on his shot. He shoots a knuckleball up there. Robertson, left hands home a 20-footer. 42-27, Robertson with four points. Here comes Smith taking it all the way and hitting the layup. So Michigan State gets everything right back as soon as Northwestern begins to whittle away. Well, nothing will go wrong in the first half for Michigan State. Smith having a great first half for the Spartans. He's netted 12. Brady inside, his baseline shot is rejected by Tower, but Ben Tower is gonna pick up a foul. I think this kid's been very impressive for Michigan State. Just a freshman, 6'7". Uh, actually, I've been amazed at his ability to jump. He's a good jumper, and, and you know, so often when you get in a situation like that, if you'll just go up and block the ball gently, they might give it to you. But when you swat it like he did almost every time, they're gonna whistle it down. Grady at the line. 
where on the season he has hit but 52%, but he hits the first one, giving him his first point of the afternoon. 55 seconds to play in the half. 44-28, 44-29. Grady now will go out, and Colin Murray, the freshman, is back in to replace him. There's Murray, number 54. I think it's significant to mention what a great athlete Grady is. He, he's 6'10", and he runs the 100-yard dash and 10 flat. He is being looked at it by professional football teams already. Perhaps in the Harold Carmichael mold. Vincent all the way. Hello. Rafael says none of that. Shoves it back in his face. <laughs> well, believe it or not, Rafael is the le uh, leading shot blocker on the Northwestern Ball Club, but I wouldn't say they're very proficient in that area. He leads them with a total of six. Regardless of how this game comes out, Rafael is going to want that on his personal highlight film of the season. Next year when Vincent's in the NBA, Rafael can look at that and see himself snuffing out Vincent's attempt. 34 seconds. 44-29, Michigan State. Stack goes down, no foul called. Vincent brings it to the corner for Tower, who almost lost it, but saves it into Smith. Berkovich, looking at the clock, moves inside 20 seconds. Spartans can hold it for the final shot. Looking to make it a 17-point lead before halftime. Here's Smith with 10 seconds. Ball knocked away. Smith picks it back up. Eight seconds. Six. Berkovich all the way to the hoop. Won't hit it. Vincent follows. Fouled with three seconds to go. No basket. I, I don't think Michigan State could have run, run this offense better. I mean, they, they wasted away the last minute of the ball game, or, or the first half, rather. Got themselves an easy layup. And hey, what, what do you usually see when they miss? Jay Vincent getting the rebound, going up for the basket or the foul. You see what I mean watching him on his shot? He doesn't have that great follow through and the great rotation, but I'll tell you what, he does a pretty decent job of putting it down. Next game for Michigan State is at Wisconsin on the 22nd. Also on the 22nd, Northwestern has their next game. They'll be at Purdue. Time for a final shot. If Rathel can get it away, he beats the horn, and it goes in and out for him. It's been that kind of half for Northwestern. Into the locker room go the happy Spartans, and one of their heroes, Jay Vincent. They lead by 17, 46 to 29. There's a hungry kind of feeling. And every day it grows You know there's so much more to you Than anybody knows In the Army, we do more before 9 a.m. Than most people do all day Hey, First Sergeant Good morning Cause we need you in the Army State Farm and Life Insurance more and more people are putting them together because the agent who handles their other family insurance is probably the best agent for their life insurance too. We know our customers. We know their problems and their needs because we see them on a regular basis. The good neighbor idea is a great idea when it comes to life insurance. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's life insurance, a State Farm way. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend, California style. In California, they don't follow trends, they set them. So people out here don't wait for the weekend to have a Michelob. They enjoy that smooth and mellow Michelob taste whenever and wherever they please. Put a little weekend in your week. Yeah. Professional diver Richard Stewart and his daughter Christy. What did they find beautiful and exciting? Stamp collecting. It's another way for us to explore nature together. Learn about exciting events and American heroes too. We collect U.S. commemoratives because they're beautiful. And fun. And it's something we can do together. When we come up for air. Collect the new Everett Dirksen stamp at your post office now. We'll return to college basketball after these messages from your local station. Saturday is the series premiere of Walking Tall. Bo Svensson stars as Buford Pusser, the crusading sheriff who inspired three movies. The legend lives on. Walking Tall. It's the Bob Hope Anniversary Special with Milton Berle, Barbara Streisand, Danny Thomas, Raquel Welch, Robert Urick, Olivia Newton, John, and more. Sunday on NBC.
And as we continue to run down what has happened so far this season of the Big Ten for you, we'll take a look at the top individual performers scoring-wise. We're looking at one of them here today, Jay Vincent of Michigan State, is averaging more than 24 points a game. Claude Gregory, Wisconsin's all-time scoring leader, is at 22. Mike McGee of Michigan at 21. Clark Kellogg with that big 42-point game. Earlier this week against uh, Northwestern, Mark Hall has the same average as Kellogg. Ted Kitchell had a 40-point game for Indiana against Illinois about a week or so ago. Herb Williams of Ohio State is tied with Kitchell. And Eddie Johnson of Illinois, the outstanding forward, is at 17 points a game. Which brings us to the subject of the player of the week. You saw Ted Kitchell's name on the list of leading scorers. Well, against Illinois last week, Kitchell had an almost perfect ball game. He scored 40 points on 11 of 13 from the field, 18 of 18 from the free throw line. That is an all-time Big Ten record for single game free throw accuracy. And with that 40-point performance in the Hoosier win over the Illini, Ted Kitchell earns the designation as last week's Big Ten Player of the Week. Now, here at halftime, we want to bring you another feature. From time to time, we'll be showing you matters of importance not necessarily related to sports around the Big Ten Conference. We'll talk about some of the scholastic achievements of the schools in the conference. And now let's look at Northwestern. Founded in 1851, Northwestern University, now as then, fulfills its opportunities and obligations as a leading center of independent, privately supported education. Northwestern's freedom to experiment and innovate develops programs that benefit all of higher education, both public and private. Accelerated programs and academic options to traditional programs provide flexibility to qualified students in all schools of the university on both of its campuses. On the Evanston, Illinois campus along Lake Michigan, 12 miles north of downtown Chicago, there are six undergraduate schools, the Graduate School and the J.L. Kellogg Graduate School of Management. Of the approximately 11,600 full-time students at Northwestern, about 6,500 are undergraduates on the Evanston campus. Northwestern's other schools and facilities are located on the Chicago campus, also along Lake Michigan on the north edge of Chicago's Loop. They include the dental, law, and medical schools, the Graduate Management School's Evening Managers Program, the Division of Continuing Education, and most of the healthcare institutions of the McGaw Medical Center of Northwestern University. Northwestern's broad range of study and its commitment to innovate allow qualified undergraduates to choose from special programs such as the six-year honors program in medical education, the three-year bachelor's degree program, the combined four-year and five-year undergraduate and master's programs depending on the field of study, student-organized seminars, dual majors, self-design majors, independent study, field study, study abroad, and interdisciplinary study in all schools. As Northwestern University celebrates its 129th anniversary, it challenges itself, its distinguished faculty, students, and alumni to continue fulfilling the promises of independent, privately supported higher education, research, and service. We'll return to college basketball after these messages from your local station. On NBC Sports World, see the first World Pro Figure Skating Championships featuring the heartthrobs of the 1980 Olympics, Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner, plus America's sweetheart, Dorothy Hamill. Then it's the basketball shenanigans of Meadowlark Lemon featuring the great Will Chamberlain. It all starts January 18th on NBC Sports World.
college basketball is being brought to you by Natural Light Beer. Taste is why you'll switch to Natural Light. By Chevrolet and your Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. By Texaco, with over 66,000 employees doing their best at their jobs to keep your trust. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's so nice to feel so good about a meal. Hey, man, I want natural light. A dapper skyscraper like you, Switch. Sure, for me, natural light's great taste run hoops around everyone else. And there's nothing artificial in this less filling beer. It's made with only natural ingredients. Yeah, but taste is why I switched. Whoa, nice, cashmere. Whoa, you can call it cashmere, you can call it reindeer. Or you can call for more beer. Natural light. Taste is why you'll switch. Hey! You're driving half a car! To prove Haviland Supreme gives cars engine protection up front. I know, but... Well, you should know. It delivered proven protection and punishing state trooper testing. Yeah, but... Where's the rest of my car? Yeah. Here it comes. To prove Texaco's Haviland Supreme delivered improved mileage, too. Up front protection backed by improved mileage. That's Haviland Supreme. Do me a favor. I know. Prove how good Haviland is in the next county, huh? All right. At this very moment, you have access to the world's most advanced information management system. The Bell Network. Managing complex voice, data, and visual communications. Use it for telemarketing, to systematically buy and sell more efficiently, to open new markets, to manage more productively. Put our knowledge to work for you. The Information Management Network from Bell. It's the Bob Hope Anniversary Special with Milton Burrow, Barbara Streisand, Danny Thomas, Raquel Welch, Robert Urich, Olivia Newton, John, and more, Sunday on NBC. Back in East Lansing, Michigan, Bob Costas along with Steve Grody, Michigan State. After having some early difficulties with Northwestern, the game was tied at 16. They break out to a 46-29 halftime lead. And a look at the statistics. Northwestern is shooting 43.5, which is exactly what they have shot all season long. Michigan State a bit beneath their norm. They're over 50% as a team for the season. They were just shy of 49 in the first half. Both teams were nearly perfect at the free throw line. But look at the rebounds. Well, and that's, I don't want to jump ahead of you, but obviously the rebounds have accounted for the, the 14 more shots that Michigan State's had. You don't have to shoot a very good percentage when you're getting that many more attempts at the basket. Obviously the difference in the first half. There were several trips down the floor for Michigan State where they had three or more cracks at the basket. On two occasions, they had five or more. Well, the one surprising thing that Northwestern has done this season, and I talked this, about this with their head coach, they've been a pretty decent rebounding ball club. And that's what's kept them in some of these early games. But obviously today, they're really being manhandled. Tower leaping against Grady, and Northwestern controls the tip. The Wildcats, as we mentioned earlier, have won three of their last four with Michigan State and seven of the last 11. It looks like that may turn around today. Robertson, head of the circle, gives it to Jenkins. Jenkins, Robertson, Stack. This is Stack getting it inside to Grady and Rafael on the floor for Northwestern as we start the Michigan second State half foul. and a Michigan State Money. foul. Uh, a couple ways to get back third. in the ball game now. First as we said before, the defense Foul. must be tremendous. Or They've obviously got to improve training. their strength on the boards, but yes. really the best way to get back Two. is to score points when the clock is not running. They're, they're going to look inside a little bit more, give the pump head fake, and try to draw some fouls and score when the clock's off. That was the third foul on Ben Tower, and obviously the first team foul on Michigan State in the second half. State opens up with Smith, Kevin Smith, and Mike Berkovich at the guards. The forwards are Jay Vincent and Ben Tower. The center is Derek Perry, and Grady makes one of two. The rebound comes to Robertson, and Robertson is fouled on the play, so it could be a three-point trip down the floor for Northwestern. Judge Heathcote perhaps contemplating the rather disquieting thought that had he stayed in school, Irvin Johnson would still be only a senior. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to mention that when we talk to him, but you're right, Irvin Johnson doing so well in the pros already would, would only be a senior Second this year and that's really amazing they're not going to give them the two shot foul and, and I'm a little surprised Robertson baseline gets the bucket anyway Basket. 46 32 they trail by 14 Robertson averaging almost 15 points a game has been held to six so far they tried the alley-oop and worked perfectly in the first half this time it didn't work 
Tower unable to hit the bucket. Tower, by the way, has four fouls now. Robertson fouled by Smith. And Robertson this time undoubtedly will get two shots. Well, Judd Heathcote's going to call a timeout right now because they're getting back in the Michigan ball game by well, scoring points five, when they, when seven, off the foul shot. We played less than a minute, and when Robertson is done at the free throw line following this timeout, Michigan Northwestern could well have cut a 17-point lead down to 12. When's the last time you heard about a price reduction on a best-selling car? Well, Chevrolet comes through with a price reduction on the popular Chevy Chevette. Yes, a sticker price reduction on every 81 Chevy Chevette. Two-door, four-door, and scooter. As prices everywhere go up and up, you can actually save money on the already economical Chevy Chevette. With its big 30 EPA estimated miles per gallon, Chevy Chevette is the best-selling small car in America, foreign or domestic. Now, an even tougher value to beat. A bright red fire truck, a blue calliope, a yellow moon, a pink balloon, a golden Dixie jamboree. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. GE TV brings you America's true colors, vivid and lifelike. And with GE's special VIR2 circuit, the color is automatically adjusted. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. GE. There really is a Kentucky Fried Chicken School. Yep, today we're making the Colonel's original recipe. Uh, what have you learned? Fresh chicken makes the best chicken. And that we use 11 herbs and spices. Oh, but that's the Colonel's secret. And special pressure cooking. <laughs> so it's always tender and juicy. Looks like you've learned to make great chicken. Only way to serve our customers right. It's so nice, nice to live. So good about a meal. So good about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Hi, I'm Linda Fred Annie. Ty Babylonia, Randy Gardner, and I team up against Dorothy Hamill, JoJo Starbuck, and Kenny Shelley on NBC Sports World. Back in East Lansing, Bob Costas with Steve Grody. At one point during the first half, Northwestern trailed by 20 at 39-19. They trailed by 17 at the half, 46 to 29. Now in the first 47 seconds, of the second half, they have made a run at Michigan State, although that miss by Robertson won't help the comeback try. It's now a 14-point game. Robertson can cut it to 13 if he hits this one, which he does. Ben Tower, the freshman who has four fouls, has gone out, and he is replaced by Rick Kay, the senior number 42 at forward for Michigan State. A five-second call. Michigan State couldn't get it in, and Northwestern has the ball back. You don't get five seconds to throw the ball in. You get five seconds to throw it in and have one of your players catch it. And that was the call. The ball was in the air in five seconds. But a long looping pass. And by the time Perry gathered it in in the front court, five seconds had elapsed. Now Northwestern with a basket can move to within 11. Still in the first minute of the second half. And Michigan State has not scored. Michigan State has played their matchup zone throughout. Smith moves in front of Grady, comes up with a steal. That ignites a three on two if they hurry. Berkovich, baseline right, they decide to set it up. Vincent, head of the key. Game's high man with 15 points. Well, and obviously now for Northwestern, you can't play zone down 13 points. They're gonna have to press up a little bit on a half court situation and look for the steal. This is Smith who scored 12 in the first half, including two three point plays inside to Vincent. Collision, foul on Northwestern. Gaddis Rathel not only got the worst of the collision, but he picks up the personal. All right, once again, see they fronted him from, when you front Jay Vincent, you gotta front him from the baseline. This way, when he turns, he's gotta turn inside and he turns into the defensive help. You turn him towards the baseline and, and then you'll see he's gonna get the basket or he's gonna get the foul. For Rathel, it's his first foul and the team's first in the second half. They get it into Vincent, who muscles it up and can't hit it. Back tapped into the hands of Rick Kay. Smith thought about a 20-footer, finds Perry for a shorter shot, and Perry cans it. Perry now with eight points. Rafael out to Jenkins. This is Robertson. And Rafael in the far corner. Jim Stack. Mike Jenkins double pumps, finds Rathel, 18 footer, good. 33, Dennis Rathel. And Northwestern won't quit. They're gonna stay right in there, they're gonna hang in there, and let's face it, we may have a battle right down to the end. Perry, hit his last one, 
can't make it two in a row. K goes up over Grady for the rebound, but not the bucket. Vincent, jump ball coming up. Judd Heathcote is beside himself on the Michigan State bench. He can't believe that a foul wasn't called. Yeah, but, but you never know if it's justified or not because Judd gets up so often. Now, this is a great play on Kay's part. I thought there may be a foul. It would be right there when he went up over the back for the ball originally. Now, I, I would agree that they didn't have simultaneous possession for a very long period of time. Just about everybody got a hand on it before it settled in the arms of Berkovich. 17 and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Vincent is way short with the jumper. Kay has the rebound, and he was fouled on the play. Basket would have counted had it fallen. Now he'll come to the line and shoot two. And Northwestern seems doomed to be beaten on the boards the entire day, and they'll, they'll not get back in the ball game if this happens. Kay doing an excellent job off the bench for the Spartans. Grady picking up the foul, his third. Team second in the half, and Kay watches it bounce off no good. One of two for Rick Kay. Colin Murray now comes back in. Then Bob Grady goes out for Northwestern. They've been shuffling those pivot men in and out all day, but neither one really is capable of handling Perry and especially Vincent down deep. Robertson to Stack. Stack over Vincent. Good. Well, Northwestern doesn't have time to be patient now. The first good shot they get, they're going to have to put it up. 17 minutes to play. They do have a dozen points to make up. 49-37, Michigan State. Perry bouncing to Vincent. Backs in on Murray. And a foul on the play. Murray fouled him. And I've always thought that this is the place where Jay Vincent <laughs> gets a lot of respect from the officials. I thought he, he initiated the contact. I thought he jumped into the Northwestern defensive player. He had his hands up in the air, and I thought they could very easily have called a charge. Murray is 6'11". He weighs 215. Vincent is 6'8", and weighs 225. That's what they list him at. I wouldn't be surprised if it was 235. Well, and, and Murray hides his 215 pounds very well. I, I don't see it. One of two at the line for Jay Vincent. 50 to 37, that was Vincent's first point of the second half. He scored 16 overall. Michigan State leads by 13 with 16.50 on the clock. In the Northwestern scheme of attack on offense, what they'll try to do is hit that ball to the middle. When you get it to the middle, you obviously have the shot or you can hit either side of the floor for the, for the off-court bank shot. Rafael put up an air ball. Michigan State has possession back, trying to build on a 13-point lead. Smith from 20. Bang! See, now this is the kind of play. If he doesn't make that shot, Judd jumps off the bench and takes him out and sits him down. If he makes it, he's a star, and he's, he's responsible for a lot of good things. Stack bouncing out to Robertson. Stack from the left side. He hits that. Stack is not an outstanding one-on-one -on -one player, but if you give him that kind of daylight, he'll hit that shot more often than not. Smith off to Vincent. Vincent faking right, going left, and hitting. Steve, as you look at Vincent, he appears to me to be just a little bit soft around the middle. Will he have to maybe take off about 10 pounds, do a modified Mark Aguirre act before he's ready for the NBA? Well, you know, the one player who comes to mind immediately when you talk about something like that is Adrian Dantley, who from his senior year to his first year in the pros took off about 20 pounds. We might see that happen, yes. The team's exchange misses, and Perry yanks down the carom for Michigan State. Dantley did it. Mark Aguirre did it, too, between his junior and senior year. Well, I don't think it does anything but help you. Perry whirling and missing. Perry goes down hard, and the loose ball is claimed by Murray. I think any time, as long as you can maintain your strength, I think the, the, the loss of weight does nothing but make you quicker and faster. Northwestern asks for a timeout. 14 minutes and 59 seconds to play in the game. Michigan State's lead is 15.
Wally Kurgen, Engineering Model Shop. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. In our new J-Car, the station wagon and the sedan have a quarter panel and side frame and one stamping. The model maker has to create this in wood. The automobile is checked against this model. The customer will notice that the doors fit better, there's less wind noise, and less rattles. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Like beer? Make mine natural like. Hey, cat food hunter, I thought you pitched that other light beer. I drink natural light because the taste strikes home with me. Yeah, there's nothing artificial in this light beer. It's made with only natural ingredients. Great, but it's that taste that winds me up. Hey! Blue beer, catnip! Natural light. Taste is why you'll switch. Saturday, it's the series premiere of Walking Tall. Bo Svensson stars as Buford Pusser, the crusading sheriff who inspired three movies. The legend lives on. Walking Tall. Northwestern ball as we come back. A moment ago in discussing the possibility that Jay Vincent might be slimming down a bit between this year and next as he prepares to go into the NBA. We were talking about two others who have done it, Adrian Dantley and Mark Aguirre, and I may have said that Aguirre slimmed down between his junior and senior years. Obviously, it was between his sophomore and junior seasons, since he is now a junior at DePaul. Jenkins with the ball. Out to Rathel and back to Jenkins. Roberson, a 20-footer. That is no good. The rebound to Rathel, one of the few offensive rebounds Northwestern has gotten today. Jenkins can't capitalize. Ball to the sideline. Berkovich chasing after it. Who touched it last? Michigan State did. Northwestern ball. As a player, that's always the time you don't know if you should try to save it because you, you feel like if you try to save it and you don't, the, that referee's obviously going to uh, take for granted that your team touched it last. Robertson off the dribble, tough hoop, can't hit it. Kay was fouled as he yanked down the rebound in between Stack and Murray. 14.25 on the clock, 54-39, Michigan State continues to lead by 15 points. Bob Grady has come in, and Colin Murray goes out. The foul was on Murray, his third. Team foul number four in the second half on Northwestern. The Spartans have three team fouls. Rick Kale on the far sideline, guarded by Rathel. Rathel got a piece of it, and it was stolen by Jenkins. Jenkins feeding Robertson on the drive, double pumps off the glass, and he doesn't get the roll. The rebound to Jay Vincent. Berkovich to the baseline, threw a crowd, put it up on the run, and he was hammered for a foul. Berkovich, as we've mentioned, a great, great set shooter. You're not going to see him take it, put it on the floor and, and take a jump shot very often. But he's surprisingly quick, and he can really explode, and he's a surprising good jumper. There you see him turn the corner very quickly, and he goes up looking for the foul, and he got it. Foul on Grady is his fourth. His substitute, Murray, recently went to the bench with three. Berkovich connects. Five points for Mike Berkovich. He's an 85% free throw shooter, and he cans them both. So Michigan State has now reestablished the 17-point lead, which they enjoyed at halftime. And Grady goes out, and Paul Schultz is in, number 23 for Northwestern. Schultz, a first-team All-State player from the Chicago area last year. And as we said, Northwestern's future is ahead of them, and it's players like this where their future lies. Jenkins with it, out at the head of the key. Bounces to Gaddis Rathel. Robertson with K on him. Jumper by Rathel is short, out of bounds, and touched last by the Spartans. The Wildcats will have it. Jenkins, Robertson, Schultz, Rathel, and Stack on the floor for Northwestern. Robertson traveled as he made the move. No basket. For Michigan State, it's Berkovich, Kevin Smith, Perry, Kay, and Vincent. A traveling call against Berkovich, the only time that you're allowed to run along the sideline when inbounding is following an opposition basket. He ran along the sideline, and there had been no basket scored by Northwestern. And it's a call you see made very seldom, possibly because it just doesn't happen that often. 
at the foul line, Stack with a turnaround. Schultz with the rebound. That's one of the few times that a Northwestern player has gotten inside and connected off an offensive rebound. Well, we said Schultz is one of those tremendous athletes. He's a 6'8 kid who possesses very good jumping ability. And, and like I said, he first team All-State in, the, in, the, in Chicago or in the Illinois. And that's got to tell you what kind of talent he possesses. The foul on Rothel is his second. Team foul six on Northwestern. Exactly 13 minutes to play in the game. 56-41, Michigan State by 15. I think you see up in the top of the corner right there. They held up the card. They call the plays from the sidelines. A traveling call on Rick Kay, and the ball goes back to Northwestern. They held up the sign on the Michigan State bench, which said shuffle. What does that mean? Well, this is just a, a what you do is you, the play will be a, the ball will be located outside. You got people cutting and setting picks for each other inside. It's called a shuffle cut. You look for that inside offense. Northwestern again, finding no luck on their shots. Rathel with the rebound, but a whistle before he can do anything with it. And now Judd Heathcote will send in some wholesale substitutions. Michigan State foul, 42, Rick Kay in second, fourth team foul. Rick Kay picked up that foul, his second, and team foul number four. Randy Morrison has come in, Bill Kaywood is in, Herb Bostic also in the lineup. And Tim Gore, the freshman guard, number 10. The only starter remaining out there is Jay Vincent. John Heathcote in his fifth year at Michigan State. National title two years ago. Of course, the reason Jay Vincent stays in, of course, Ben Tower, who's played a very decent game today, already with four fouls. Rathel set the inbound. Robertson grabs it. 12.35 to play in the ball game. 56-41. Northwestern is down by 15 and with the ball. Robertson lets it go. And the rebound knocked away by Rothello, who can't save it in, and it will belong to Michigan State. Hustling play, but to no avail. Next week on the Big Ten Game of the Week, next Saturday, from Iowa, Minnesota, against the Hawkeyes of Iowa. And on the inbound, Rothell fouls Bostic as he grabs the pass. So often in a ball game like this, the first few minutes of the second half are, imp are important. We saw, we saw Northwestern come out, score the first couple baskets, get themselves back in the ball game, but Michigan State has, has quelled, quelled the rally now. They've, they've stood up to the pressure. They still got a 15 point lead, eight minutes into the, into the second half. You gotta believe that they're now establishing control. Bostic is at 86% in limited opportunities from the line this year, six or seven prior to that when he hits it. Looks for his fourth point in his team's 58th, which would give them a 17-point lead once again with 12.25 left. Can't hit it, and the rebound to Schultz. Robertson. And Jenkins. Jenkins is the leading assist man on the Northwestern Club. Robertson swings it to him. Jenkins on the run, tries to gun one up, and he was fouled on the play. Michigan State foul. Randy Morrison picks up the personal. That's his first, and it's team foul number five on Michigan State. Northwestern is already over the limit with 12.06 to play in the game. Morrison really is a player to watch in the future for the Spartans. Up until today, it started every game, 12 games, 12 starts. And they went with Kevin Smith today, but believe me, Morrison is going to figure big in the Big Ten play. Jenkins now has six. And one more free throw coming. Fifty-seven, forty-three, Michigan State by fourteen. Bostic to the front court for the Spartans gives to Morrison. Morrison watched by Jenkins off to Vincent. Vincent gets it up from the foul line. Whistle. He traveled. But well, that was a tough call. I don't know if we'll get to see it on replay. I, I personally didn't see the walk. He could have dragged that pivot foot. You know, he, when he fakes one way and, and comes back enough with the jumper, his, his strides are so long, it looks like he covers a lot of area, but I don't really think he walked. Northwestern working it around the perimeter, trying to find some kind of weakness in the Michigan State zone. 
It's a defense they haven't solved too frequently this afternoon. Well, they've really shown an inability to get the ball inside, and that's, that's where you got to pick up your three-point plays at this stage of the game. Jenkins misses the double pump. Vincent has another rebound for Michigan State. For Vincent, unofficially, his ninth rebound of the day. Randy Morrison. Morrison, the freshman guard, hands to another freshman backcourter, Gore, who gets it to Bostic. Jay Vincent, the senior. Vincent whirling at the foul line, draws double coverage. Bostic is open, baseline jumper too long. Gore got up over Robertson for the rebound, but Gore commits the foul. Well, that call's obvious, obviously going to be unpopular here in Jenison Fieldhouse. But nonetheless, the little body contact, and we'll get a chance to see it. Jay Vincent does such a great job. He held the ball and held the ball. He made the proper pass, waited for somebody to get open. There you see the Northwestern player with the proper position and the foul. And there you get a look at Judd defense, Judd defense Heathcote. Judd never seems to smile. This one's got to make him a little bit happy. Rathel out at the head of the key. And Robertson with the baseline jumper. The tip try won't fall. And the loose ball to Vincent. Once again, a whole group of Michigan State players are at the scorer's table. Wholesale substitutions coming up for Heathcote. Kaywood gets it baseline to Vincent, and Jay Vincent connects. 59 to 43, a 16 point lead. Vincent now has 20 points. 15 of them in the first half. Ball in the corner is Rafael. This is Robertson. 20 foot jump. No good. He is now 3 of 12 from the field today. Robertson is hitting 25% from the floor. All alone is Morrison and Morrison cans it. For one reason, Morrison has been saying less playing time. He, hey, he's just a freshman, and believe me, it's tough enough to handle the ball in the Big Ten. In addition to having to shoot it in the basket, he's just been timid to put it up. Timeout Northwestern, 9.49 left. Michigan State, 61. The Wildcats, 43. I'm with the rough stuff, Sova. I'm going to get swivelized. You mean civilized. I mean swivelized. Introducing Gillette's new swivel razor, the only disposable with a moving head. Is this the beginning of swivelization? Hi. The swivel razor's moving head hugs your face. No other disposable shaves you closer, more comfortably. I demand my swivel rights. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Try Gillette's new twin blade swivel razor. Any other disposable is unswivelized. <clears throat> A word to the wise. If you're thinking about an RCA Selective Vision video recorder, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Buy this magnificent Selective Vision 650 now, the one with remote control special effects, and RCA will give you seven blank videotapes worth more than a Franklin. That's a hundred bucks. The RCA Selective Vision more than $100 tape giveaway. Don't tarry. Time lost is never found again. A couple of key Midwestern matchups tomorrow on NBC's college basketball coverage, 1 Eastern, 12 Central time. Either the Big Ten confrontation between Indiana and Ohio State, an eagerly awaited ball game, first of two this year, or it will be Missouri from the Big Eight against Louisville, the Metro Conference and national champions at Freedom Hall in Louisville. That's tomorrow on NBC. Michigan State in that zone defense which they have used throughout. Northwestern with the ball, Robertson ahead of the key. And Bob, we've talked both about the, the future of Northwestern, and, you know, we brought up the name McGuire here, and I think there's a little correlation. I really believe that Northwestern needs that player like McGuire who stayed home and, and, and stayed at school in his local area, and Northwestern needs a player like that to stay home, go to Northwestern, and really take them to the top, and I think that's what's going to eventually, uh, you know, turn the tide for them and really put them back in the thick of things as far as Big Ten basketball is concerned. Schultz out, Bob Grady is back in for Northwestern. This is Kevin Smith with the ball for the Spartans. 9.20 to play in the game. Unless something drastic happens, both these clubs will be seven and six. Here's the alley-oop! And Tyler hits it from Vincent. Let's take a look at it again. It's the second time they did it. Tyler just a little bit off balance on his jump, and he couldn't slam it down. 
you know, I don't know that Tower has great, great hands, but he's really shown the ability to go up and control that ball in the air. And now all the spectacular plays are starting to happen. Vincent shoving one back in Rafael's face. And is there a, uh, any phase of the game Jay Vincent does not excel in? Rafael inbounds. And the running one handed by Stack is no good, and an offensive foul is called as he collides with Tower. 8.53 remaining, Michigan State is up by 20. 63 to 43. Assuming this score holds up, both teams will be seven and six overall. Both will be one and three in the conference. Well, you see this play happen so often in college basketball. I think the big area of improvement that the pro players make is when they make that initial penetration, they pull up and they shoot that little bank shot. The college players tend to keep their momentum going, try to take it to the hoop and, and create that charge situation so often. Nothing but purple shirts around the rebound. They combine to knock it out of bounds. All yeah. Rich Falk can do is look on with an air of resignation yeah. on the Northwestern Bay. That, that said it all, the frustration right there. Berkovich. 8.45 on the clock. Michigan State nursing a 20-point lead. Kevin Smith, stutter steps, penetrates, lays it up and in. Whoa. Smith has 16, scored 12 of them in the first half. Robertson, who has hit just three of 13 from the floor. Stack, with that unorthodox jumper, nothing but air. Grabbed by Perry, Smith comes racing down, pulls up, spots Vincent, 18-footer, count it! Well, and, and I think it's, it it's, was so appropriate that we mentioned what Perry and Kevin Smith can do for this ball club before it even started. Perry with a tremendous effort in the first half on the boards, he shot the ball well, and Kevin Smith is the type of momentum player that we've seen him be today. He can make the great plays, he can make the great basket, uh, once again, it just doesn't look like a ball club that hasn't won a game in the Big Ten, Michigan State. Well, in seven minutes and 48 seconds, that situation will be rectified. This will be the Spartans' first conference victory. Robertson still can't buy a bucket, and Vincent is fouled as he cleans the boards. 33. Rich Falk now only hoping that it doesn't become a complete blowout. Hoping his club can come back and make it respectable in the last 7.41. They trail now by 24, and Vincent has a chance to add more for the Spartans. He has scored 22 points today. He's also in double figures and rebounds. Has the bonus coming. Randy Morrison now comes in for the Spartans. He replaces the senior Mike Berkovich. We mentioned the possibility that could there be something Jay Vincent doesn't do well. If 65% from the free throw line isn't doing very well, then that is probably the only thing that he has trouble with. The MSU lead is 25. Jenkins at the head of the circle. Robertson. Grady and Stack. Stack misses from the baseline, and Tower, who is aptly named, gets up high for the rebound. Morrison takes a tumble. The steal by Stack, who threw it ahead to nobody in particular. He spotted a body out of the corner of his eye, but it was wearing a white shirt. Smith. Out to Randy Morrison. And Jay Vincent. Vincent is foul on the play by Grady. That might well be Grady's fifth foul. It is. He's done. So Grady departs, and Paul Schultz comes up off the Wildcat bench to replace him. Some of the students here at Michigan State give him a less than pleasant send-off. Well, they're, they're starting to sound like they think it's all over. I'd almost have to agree. 25 points now with six and a half minutes to play. Seems a reasonably safe conclusion. Robertson to Rafael. Jenkins with a 20-footer. High Archer drops home and Tower fouled him. And Tower is fouled out, I believe. Michigan State foul on 20 and Tower is fifth. 
So Tower has fouled out, but this freshman has impressed us. He really has. And he did all the things well that we were told he could do. A pretty decent jump shot from in close, but a tremendous, tremendous leaper. And of course, you know, you can talk all you want about strategy, but I guarantee you, good solid defense and good board work are going to keep you in every ball game. And he showed that he can help Michigan State on the boards if he concentrates. Jenkins looking to break into double figures, and that is his 10th point, completing the three-point play. Six minutes and 39 seconds left. 68-46, a 22-point lead for Michigan State. Remember, following our basketball telecast, the Bob Hope Desert Classic on NBC Sports. Jenkins hits the deck, but he picks up the foul in the process. That's his third. Both teams are over the limit. Smith will shoot a one and one. Here it is again. All right, here it is again. Kevin Smith does the proper thing here. He's got his man beat, so he, so he takes it to the middle of the floor, hoping to open things up, and there you see the trip on Jenkins. It could very well be that this last six and a half minutes takes as long as the entire first half. Smith now has registered 17 points. Art Aaron is going to come in for Northwestern. Aaron is a freshman from St. Ignatius High School in Chicago. Where's number 24? There he is. 6'7 and a slender 185. And probably the most celebrated freshman to sign at Northwestern in a long, long time. Once again, a wealth of young talent at Northwestern. Smith's two free throws give him 18 points and give the Spartans a 24-point lead at 70 to 46. Robertson picked up out of the zone by Bostic. Swings it over to Jenkins for the jumper that's short. Got his own rebound and a whistle. Michigan State foul. 41. Perry picks up the foul. It's fourth. And for State, number 22, Bill. Right, Michigan Taylor. State <laughs> insist on doing the one thing you don't want to do with the lead like this, and that's stop the clock. Bill Kaywood checks in, sophomore from right here in East Lansing, and he replaces Derek Perry. Perry also a sophomore. Jenkins will have one more, 6.15 on the clock. Jenkins has scored 11. He's from Westinghouse High School in Chicago, and has that school ever produced some ball players? Well, I believe that that's the Catholic League that you're talking about in Chicago that, those, that he played in. And Northwestern has signed, the last few years in a row, Northwestern has signed the Player of the Year out of the Catholic Conference in Chicago. Kevin Smith showing that quickness once again, penetrating and hitting that scoop shot off the glass. Here it is again. Well, you know, it's the, it's the old four-corner spread that North Carolina made so famous. And, there yeah, you see, you know, so often when you go in for that charge, the player takes his eye off the basket and he'll charge to give up the foul shot at the other end and then, and then miss it. He did, of course, excellent concentration, threw it high up on the glass and did convert for the two points. So Schultz walks to the other end and hits the free throw, giving him three points. 6.07 remaining, 72.49, 73.49. Manning points to the wrong team's score, 72-50. Northwestern's in enough trouble without me giving their points to Michigan State. Bostic palmed it, and the ball goes back to Northwestern. 72-50, Michigan State by 22. Jenkins with it against the zone. Off to Robertson. Art Aaron, the freshman. Aaron from the head of the key with his first shot, air ball. Whistle inside on the rebound, Robertson commits the foul. Northwestern foul, 21, Rob Robertson. Now when, when you talk about uh, breaking a zone defense, a couple things are important. There, there you see the Northwestern the bench and the head Michigan coach Rich Fall. A couple things are important when you try to break a zone defense. First of all, that you pass the ball quickly. And also I think the most important thing that a lot of people don't realize is when you get the ball, you have to be in position to take a shot. It's, you always have to be a threat to draw the defense to you. Let's see if Northwestern does a good, shot, good job with that. One pass, two passes. Everybody's in position to shoot the ball. I don't, I don't think it's something that they've done exceptionally well throughout the ball game, though. Aaron missing from the baseline. 
Michigan State off of the rebound. A moment ago at the other end, Vincent missed once again from the free throw line. Here is Morrison all the way to the hoop missing. Vincent trying to follow, muscles it up, got it, it counts, and a foul on the play. Well, here it is again. And see, Schultz is going to claim the same thing I did in, in the first half. That a big guy like this gets the ball inside, and you just stand there with your hands up. Now, let's see if he doesn't jump back. See? I think that he jumps back into him. And But once again, it's the, it's the close call. Is it a charge or is it a block? Vincent completes the three-point play. Jay Vincent has scored 26. Unofficially, Northwestern is hitting 37% from the floor for the game. This might be the fifth time this season they've shot under 40 in a ball game. Well, see, here's what I'm saying. They, they passed the ball three times right there, and nobody was in position to Michigan take a State shot. Foul, 22, Kaywood. Bill Kaywood fouled Schultz as Schultz received the pass in the lane. A one-and-one one is coming for Paul first. Schultz with 5.02 remaining. And Michigan State line. in front by Paul 25, 75 shot. to 50. He'll have the bonus. He gets the bonus. Don't forget, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central Time. On the Big Ten Game of the Week, it is Minnesota at Iowa. What a matchup that'll be. Minnesota playing at Illinois later today. And of course, with Crafferson and Waite for Iowa and Brookings, they've got a big, strong front line. And we already mentioned it. Minnesota, probably the tallest team in the world, much less the country. They're bigger than most pro teams. They go... 6'9", 6'10", 7'2", across the front line in, in Holmes, Coleman, and Brewer. Randy Brewer, of course, the 7'2"-inch player, flanked by Gary Holmes and Ben Coleman, each in the neighborhood of 6'10". And, of course, you're going to see, I think, a player who learned a lot from Kevin McHale last year as a freshman. You know, so often these young players who don't get a chance to play, but week after week after week they play against some pretty decent players on their own ball clubs, and that's where they really develop their talent. Vincent now has 28. Inside five minutes to play. Again, a 25-point Michigan State lead. Schultz out to Robertson. Robertson faking. Defenders all over it. Deflection taken back by Aaron. Reverse won't fall. Tip up, no good. Loose ball put back up and in by Stack of Northwestern. That's the first time that I can remember Northwestern getting three cracks on one trip down the offensive uh, end of the floor. Vincent missing, trying to reach 30 points. Loose ball bounces to Kevin Smith, and Smith is fouled on the play by Robertson. There have been a few occasions when Northwestern has managed an offensive rebound, but as far as I can recall, it's the first time they got three shots. Well, it's much too late now. I, more than anything else, that was Michigan State not wanting to foul in that situation. So they're going to stand there and, and stay away from the play now. Going out is Bill Kaywood and making his first appearance is Steve Bates. There's Bates, a junior, 6'10 and 225 from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Smith at the line. Won't get the bonus. Vincent keeps it alive, pulls it in. His shot is blocked by Art Aaron. Loose ball to Robertson. This is three on two with Robertson in the middle. And they lose it. He tried to get it to Aaron and on the turnover, Michigan State has it back. And that's the mistake a point guard makes every once in a while. You come down on the fast break when you get rid of the ball before you get pressure. He, he waited a little too long for a defensive commitment, and then, of course, he did throw the ball away. In a loss at Iowa, a 65-57 loss at Iowa, on the 10th of January, Jay Vincent, the man with the ball, had 36 points. That is the high game of the season for him. He has 28 so far today. Gore slides through, and Gore, the freshman, made the move but couldn't hit the hoop. Loose ball is picked up by Northwestern. Jenkins comes racing back. Foul line jumper in the air and no good. The tip is up and in. There were three players around it. Either Stack or Schultz got the tip. Well, and I really think on the last two situations, the officials have done a good job of not blowing down the foul. Uh, it, at this stage of the game, I think you're going to let them play a little bit more, although they had, a, they had a blow that one right there in the corner. Credit that last tip in to Stack, and he now has 14 points for Northwestern. 3.40 to play. Michigan State by 21 at 77 to 56. And I think it is about time to start uh, talking about the most valuable player of the ball game. When do we want to announce that? Well, in just a moment we'll do that. Bob Fossum is at the free throw line. He's a freshman, just 5'9 and 160. 
making his first appearance and makes one of two. Fossum's a tremendous golfer. He's on the golf team up here at State. He's not a scholarship player, but he came out and he's made the ball club. In the corner stack, they bring it out high to Robertson. Robertson whirling to the foul line, double team, gives to Vincent. Vincent on the run, the gun, missed it, but he was fouled. Well, what do you think, MVP, Jay Vincent? Well, I don't see why not. But let, let's, let's don't, like I said, let's don't forget about the two players who, you know, are going to have to play like they did today, and, and that's Scott Pe uh, Perry and uh, Kevin Smith. Those are the two guys that were really the key in the ball game. But you know, Jay Vincent is just too dominant, uh, too big a factor in this ball game. I've got to go with Jay. I'll go along with that too, but also a nod in the direction of Kevin Smith for running the attack as well as he did. Jenkins with 3.23 left, tries to bring his team to within 20. And Michael Jenkins makes the move. Timeout. And officials timeout is called, three minutes and 23 seconds remaining. Michigan State with a 20 point lead. They led by 17 at the half. They're up by 20 now and we'll be right back. This bud's for everybody who puts in a hard day's work. This bud's for you, for all you do. Coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Chevy's $10 million options giveaway is on. Right now, Chevy's giving away a nationwide total of $10 million in options free of charge. On specially equipped Caprice Classics and Impalas, Malibus, Camaros, and Monte Carlo. See your Chevy dealer now. Buy a special group of options, and Chevy will give you another group of popular options free of charge. Chevy's $10 million options giveaway is on. Later today, see exciting fourth round coverage as top celebrities and golf's top pros try to take home the title of the prestigious Bob Hope Desert Classic. Later today on NBC. Hi, I'm Jim Dutcher, head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Be with us next week when we take on the Hawkeyes in Iowa City. At Iowa, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central next week on the TVS NBC Big Ten Game of the Week. You're looking at Jay Vincent, number 31 of the Michigan State Spartans. He is our MVP for today's game, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 check to the General Scholarship Fund at Michigan State University. This money will be used to assist students in furthering their chosen academic fields of interest. This is Vincent, appropriately enough, swishing one from the baseline, giving him 30 points. Somebody must have told him. Somebody told him. The Chevrolet MVP of today's game, and in his name, $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund at Michigan State from Chevrolet. Jenkins to Art Aaron. 80 to 58, Aaron guns one and is way off the mark with it. Bouncing into the arms of Morrison. Morrison comes racing down. A blind pass to Fossum, and Fossum tried to get it back to Vincent in the middle. Northwestern picks that off. Here's Aaron, and he will blow it, but it's picked up by Stack, trailing the play, and he lays it in. That's good by Stack. You know, it's normally in this type of, of a ball game where you're going to want to get Jay Vincent out. You don't want a freak accident, an injury, or something like that. He can't come up with a sprained ankle. And I'm surprised that he's still in the ball game. Vincent from the baseline looks for 32, doesn't have it. Got it back, muscles it up, again, 32 points. Unofficially, Michigan State is at 49% from the field. Northwestern approximately 37%. And a timeout is asked for by Northwestern. Two minutes and 13 seconds to play, and there's the arithmetic, 82-60, Michigan State. Let us show you the lengths Texaco sometimes has to drill to find more energy. This is New York's World Trade Center. Imagine drilling the length of 15 World Trade Centers. 15 World Trade Centers. That's almost four miles. Well, that's how deep Texaco has to drill. Four miles down at a million dollars a mile to find more energy for you here in America. Texaco, working to keep your trust. This bud's for everyone who serves us a hot one, pops us a cold one. This bud's for you, for all you do, the king of beers is coming through. 
Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This Bud's for you. On NBC Sports World, see the greatest lineup of figure skaters ever assembled in one competition. Plus basketball's Meadowlark Lemon and Sports Journal looks at athletes' wives tomorrow. A reminder, the next Saturday on NBC and TBS, the Big Ten Game of the Week is from Iowa, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. The Golden Gophers of Minnesota against the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Well, you got to help me next week if I say Jim Dutcher, former, and I, I say he coaches Michigan. I've interviewed him on a couple of different occasions. He originally recruited me to go to Michigan and, of course, was a great assistant down there, and I've made that mistake a bundle of times. Paul Schultz. Paul Schultz hitting on the turnaround for Northwestern and bringing them to within 20 as we move inside two minutes to play, 82 to 62. Schultz has scored eight. A couple of substitutions are in for Northwestern. We'll pick those up for you in a second. Art Aaron with a steal, takes it all away. Ball knocked out of bounds by Gore. Tim Gore batting it away for Michigan State. Northwestern will inbound. John Egan is back in the game, number 12. In for the first time is Jeff Blackard wearing number 11, a junior from Decatur, Illinois. And there is the long one by Blackard, which is off the mark. And the rebound to Jay Vincent, who has scored 32 points. Vincent into the front court. He's being guarded by Tom Schnepp. Morrison double pumps, and his pass through the lane is picked off by Aaron. They get the bucket with Tom Schnepp hitting on the back end of the fast break. Schnepp, a freshman from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin making his first appearance as we wind into the game's final moments. A minute 15 to play. Vincent with a long bomb. Yes! He has scored 34 on 13 of 23 from the field, 8 of 12 from the line. And considering the fact that he missed his first five shots, he has hit 13 of his last 18. His teammate Kevin Smith has 20 points, 7 of 9 from the field, 6 of 7 from the line. Egan with it. 50 seconds to play in the ball game. Schnepp, who had a bucket a moment ago, works it inside to Schultz. Schultz is fouled on the play by Bates of Michigan State. Steve Bates picking up the personal. And you're going to hear a loud, loud roar. And you're going to watch, watch the man of the game uh, walk off the floor right now. Standing ovation for most of the fans here at Jenison Fieldhouse for Jay Vincent, who had 34 points and 11 rebounds. Probably his best all-round performance of the season. The ball is awarded to Michigan State, and the Spartans will have it with 46 seconds to play. He had 36 points on January 10th at Iowa, but only four rebounds in that game. In this one, he's in double figures in rebounds, and he has 34 points. He opened the conference season with an 11-point game as Fossum scoops it up, double pump, and misses. Aaron has the rebound. Vincent opened with an 11-point, three-rebound game in a loss at Indiana. But since then, he's really hit his stride. Egan shot rejected by Bostic, but there's a foul on the play. Since then, he has scored 36 points against Iowa, 26 against Minnesota, and today 34 against Northwestern. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the fine people here at Michigan State for their assistance in today's game. Athletic Director Doug Weaver and his staff, head basketball coach Judd Heathcote, and his two assistants Dave Harshman and Edgar Wilson, and Sports Information Director Nick Vista and his assistant Mike Pearson. We also want to express our appreciation to the people at Northwestern, one of two at the line by Egan. And Michigan State down with a rebound. Athletic director Doug Single, head basketball coach Rick Falk. And a traveling call. The ball will come back to Northwestern. And assistant sports information director Don McLaughlin, who is here with the Wildcats today. Our statisticians for today's game, Dave Ross and Bob Beckoff. And we want to thank them as well. State foul. Foul on the Tim play Gore against Tim Gore. We have 18 seconds remaining. Michigan State is in front by 19, 84 to 65. And a special thanks to the fine NBC crew here today, headed by producer One Scott shot. Kane, director Bonus Jim shot. Holmes, and our stage manager Chuck Frankel. Our conference coordinator from the Big Ten office is Mr. Jeff Elliott. Gets the bonus. I like that, Mr. <laughs> Proper tone of respect. Egan makes them both. 84 to 67. 
Teams have played even point-wise in the second half. Michigan State led by 17 at halftime. They lead by 17 now. Fossum ran himself into trouble. Aaron took it away. Art Aaron gets the bucket, and he's fouled with eight seconds to play. So yeah, Northwestern's going to close the final score up a bit. Michigan State foul on but I think this is a chance for the people around the Big Ten. You know, some Friday and yeah, or Sunday, they're going to read where Illinois and Indiana came into Michigan yeah, State and got beat. And they're not going to be surprised after getting a chance to see the Spartans here in Jackson Fieldhouse. Aaron completes the three-point play. 84-70. And the jumper by Kevin Radlett. His only shot of the game is in and out, and that winds it up. The final score, Michigan State 84 and Northwestern 70. Bob Hope Desert Golf Classic coming up on NBC. For Steve Grody, I'm Bob Costas. See you next week for Minnesota against Iowa. It's the Bob Hope Anniversary Special with Milton Burrow, Barbara Streisand, Danny Thomas, Raquel Welch, Robert Urich, Olivia Newton-John, and more Sunday on NBC.